Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. The case that I'm going to be looking into today is the case of a missing, well, was nine-year-old girl at the time called Aisha Degree. Aisha Jekyla Degree was born on the 5th of August in 1990 to parents Harold and Equila Degree, apologies if I've said that wrong, in Shelby, North Carolina. Aisha was the second born. She had an older brother called Obike Bryant. Aisha was described as a very sensible girl. She, the family was religious. Aisha would enjoy going to church and she, well, she absolutely loved doing that. She was also said to be very weary of strangers and she also had a fear of dogs as well. So she had, she was very timid and like shy and had these fears, which has made people wonder, truly wonder. And her, including her mother too, like why? What happened that night happened? I mean, you'll see if you don't know the case, we will get into the details, but it just leaves so many questions. The children never really strayed far from their apartment. The parents were very safety conscious. Now they both worked, so when the, when the children finished school, the parents wouldn't always be home. And they were termed as something called latchkey kids, which I'd never heard of, but it basically means that the parents weren't home, they would have like their own set of keys and they would let themselves in. And then they would, I don't know, do chores, do the homework and just wait for the parents to actually come home. Harold would often do like a night shift. So he wouldn't be home until sort of early hours, but their mother, Equila would, she won't be home in time for them to get home obviously, but she would come a little bit later on. The parents had strict rules and the children followed them. They were so self-conscious about safety. They often turned on the TV and had seen people's children going missing, being abducted, things like that. And often by like an outside person, like somebody chatting on a computer or something like that. So they didn't even allow a computer in their own home because they just didn't want anything like that to happen to the children. They kept them in like a bubble for their own safety. And it was just how they tried to keep them safe. They were deeply religious and they were very, very close knit family. They, as I've said, they went to church a lot. It was every Sunday that they actually went there. And they also lived on the same street as their auntie and their grandmother. So they always had like family support around even if their parents weren't sort of home from work yet. Their aunt was called Alicia. She really loved school. She especially loved maths and science, I believe. She was a very good student and, a, and very bright. She also was an avid basketball player along with her brother. She was on like the girls team, he was on the boys team kind of thing. And she was very creative. She had a dream to become an illustrator. Now on the 12th of February 2009, Aisha actually had this big basketball game with her group. And they ended up actually losing it. It was the first one that they had lost of the season. And Aisha had, she had fouled out apparently. And she took it really hard. She really blamed herself for it because she felt like she was the one that lost them the game. And it really did play on her mind uh, that day. She then, after the game, she stayed at her cousin's, I believe, and her mood like evened out. You know, it got a lot better. She didn't dwell on it too much, but she was gutted that they lost. But then she started to feel better as the day went on. Two days later, it was actually her parents' anniversary. It was Valentine's Day, you know, February, 14th of February. And kids apparently went to church after visiting a relative and then they headed home. They actually shared a room together, the children, and so they headed up to bed. It was said around eight or 9 p.m. There's lots of different sources that say lots of different things. I'm not gonna get into all that. The time is, uncertain I guess so it was either eight between eight and nine kind of thing so they go to bed they get settled in and that day the weather was really really bad a car ended up crashing into like a power grid thing and it ended up cutting out power to the whole neighborhood so the house lost power but they did actually get it back just after midnight now Harold ended up coming back home. I'm not sure what time he got home from work, whether he got home from work earlier and then went back out again. I don't know, but it was said that he, when the power came on, he start, just chilled out and watched them tell it. He went up, he checked on the kids who were fast asleep in bed. He then goes back downstairs, probably watches some more tell it. At about 2.30, he goes back up again and checks on the children who once more were still fast asleep in bed. 
What happened in the night is very strange because between that time when Harold last checked on them, which was 2.30, and 6 a.m. the next morning, Asher was gone. Equila decided the day before, I believe, they normally had a bath at night time. Now, I don't know whether the power cut was like a reasoning behind it or whether the kids were just tired and didn't fancy a bath. She, they didn't have it that night before and so she decided to wake them up early the next morning so that she could give them bath. It was quarter to six and she runs a bath for a kid. She then goes in to wake them up and Aisha is not there. So she thinks, oh, she must have got up already. So she goes downstairs to check around for her daughter and she's not downstairs either. She also, when she had a look around, she found that her book bag had gone along with her keys. She woke up her husband who said, you know, maybe she's gone to her aunt's, maybe she's gone to her grandma's, who again lived on the same street. They checked there and they had not seen anything of her either. That is when panic really, really set in and they called the police whilst they went out looking for her. The police came around pretty quickly. They ended up speaking to her brother who said that he didn't really see anything, you know, he shared a room, so he didn't really see anything. He heard a bed squeaking in the night and maybe her get up, but he just figured that she was going to the toilet and, you know, that she would come back. And so he went back to sleep. So he didn't really see anything uh, apart from that. The police scoured the area and just after 2pm, the degree house was cordoned off. They brought in sniffer dogs, they were unable to pick up a scent. There wasn't any sign of a break-in or forced entry or anything like that. You know, looking at it from the outside in, she had taken her bag, she had taken her keys. It looked like she had left of her own car. She was only nine, bearing in mind at this point, but it looked like she just walked out in the early hours of the morning. And again, the weather outside was so horrible. So why would a nine-year-old girl pick up her bag, pick up her keys and leave in the middle of the night when everything seemed normal? Nobody, she was her normal happy self. The only thing that had sort of saddened her was, you know, that basketball game that they lost, which she was sad for a, about for a while, but then that was that, she was fine. So why did she leave? Police couldn't fathom it, her parents couldn't fathom it. They ended up reaching out to local residents and putting the word out to see whether anybody had seen anything, any of the public, because obviously there's a nine-year-old girl wandering around in the pitch black. Surely somebody would have seen something driving down a road or something like that. By the afternoon, they had two leads on people that had seen her. A 25-year-old truck driver had actually seen her whilst he was having his lunch and then he drove down this highway and he saw her walking down it. He noticed that this little girl was by herself and so he circled back, but then she noticed that he had circled back and she apparently ran into the woods to avoid him. And then she was gone. The second person that saw her was a former deputy sheriff. He was out trucking with his son and he noticed this small little girl along the highway. He didn't stop but he put a call in to other truckers to keep an eye out for her. Realising there could be a connection, he obviously reported it. So going back to the house, the police checked around and tried to figure out what she'd actually taken and it looked like she'd taken some sweets, some paper and some pencils, some clothes and probably put them all in a book bag. It was really unknown as to why a sweet little polite girl who followed her family's rules, who was happy doing so with such a happy family life, would just up sticks and leave at, I don't know, 4am maybe? Who even knows what time she left? But it was pitch black, it was horrific weather and she picks up a bag and she just goes. Why? Nobody knows why. Still to this day, nobody knows why. Again, the fear of dogs sometimes made it difficult for her to leave the house because a lot of people have dogs. She was frightened to death of them. And so, you know, sometimes she'd just rather stay in because of that. So even with that, a fear of like her timidness and her fear of dogs, and yet she just goes out on her own, it just, it's insane. It really is. Police searched five mile radius, you know, around the house. They just carried on looking around the highway where she'd been spotted and just everywhere that they could to try and find her. The community all came together. They did searches everywhere and it didn't take too long before they found something of note. A woman called Debbie Turner asked people to check her property that she owned. She actually owned this upholstery business and she had like a big plot of land. She had this shed on it that didn't have a door on it. So she just thought that maybe uh, somebody could be in there or hiding or something like that. So she asked them to check her land. It was about 300 feet off the road and people did. They went and checked the land, they went and looked in the shed and they found sweet wrappers that actually 
matched the sweets that I told you that she took some sweets with her those were the sweets those were the wrappers to that those sweets so it led people to believe that she had been there they also found a mini mouse hair clip a hair bow i think a marker pen along with this picture of a little girl that nobody knows who she is this picture has gone out there her you know Aisha's parents do not have a clue who this person is this little girl so why on earth if the if she did have this picture why did she have it because it was a picture of that of a girl that nobody knew police theorized that she'd walked down south down highway 18 where she was seen running into the woods police spent the next seven days and 9,000 man hours searching a two by three mile area and found absolutely nothing they combed through 300 tips and nothing panned out. Meanwhile, the Degree family are going on TV. They are making public appearances. They are trying to make the missing daughter the center of attention to try and get any information out that they could, hoping that that would help. Obviously, a lot of the times the public is key in these cases because they're the ones that may have seen her. They're the ones that may hold vital information in this case that could crack it and could find her so you want to get it out there you want to you want the public's help on these cases because they could be vital in it but nothing really came of fruition you know tips and things came in but they just led nowhere nobody could find her in summer of 2000 a former classmate of Ash ash's mother actually came forward and said that he had hit her during a drug deal he instantly knew that she was dead. He had pulled her body into the car, drove her to a lake and dumped it there. And then the officers went to the site as to where, you know, she had been hit. There was no evidence of blood, no evidence of a crime being committed at all. They went to the lake, they scoured that twice, I believe. They found nobody. They actually believed that this person was trying to get like a lighter sentence on something that they were already going through and they just made it up, essentially. You think that you're getting these tips and that something may come you may finally found her and then it proves to probably be made up it's just so frustrating in these cases when people do things like that to try and like get a lighter sentence for themselves because you're giving the family hope that they might find out finally what happened to the girl and then it proves to be false so it's just really frustrating it took more than a year and a half for the next clue to be discovered when construction worker terry fleming came across something whilst he was digging up i believe either a roadway or a driveway or something like that he's digging up and he finds this sort of black bag so he opens the black bag he gets this gut feeling that there's something weird in this bag you know sometimes you do he opens up the bag and he finds this beige and black book bag and it has the name asia degree on it along with a phone number and this was on the 30th of august in 2001 so basically he didn't have phone service and so he writes all the information down he goes home he tells his wife about it his wife instantly recognizes the name and tells him to phone the police so he does police went and recovered the bag they said that it had been back buried for a while by the by the looks of it inside they found some clothes some paper pencils and they said that most of the items did belong to asia but they didn't reveal the full contents of the bags sort of there and then they brought in cadaver dogs to search around the area you know if a backpack was buried there in a bag which why if somebody hadn't taken asia why was a backpack buried in a bag you know it didn't make any sense so they're thinking that maybe she had been murdered around that area maybe that they would find a body the dogs marked on three different spots for a body but when they dug up those areas up nothing was found over the years there's been a few suspects and over the years those suspects it's gone nowhere basically in 2004 there was like an inmate who came forward to say that they knew where Aisha's body was investigators followed that up only to find animal remains on the site and again over the years nothing's come over the leads any suspects they've either been ruled out or didn't have enough evidence to charge them fully and find out fully what happened not one person has officially been linked to Aisha's disappearance as of yet in 2015 a tip came in to say that somebody had seen a young girl getting into a green ford thunderbird or a lincoln mark IV the night that asia degree disappeared the obviously the investigation was reopened they looked into all of that and they announced that lead in 2016 
They also, in 2018, released images of Aisha's backpack and what the contents were. A copy of Dr. Seuss's Milligan's pool book was in there and a new Kids on the Block t-shirt, both of which were not thought to be in Aisha's possession when she went missing. So whose were these items if they weren't hers? It's just very strange, this case. Now, it was found out that the book was actually checked out from Aisha's school in early 2000, but again, they don't believe that it was her item. So, uh, I say, what? It's so weird. This case is so strange. So, over the years, they have done age progression photos, which I'll show you. And that's all the information like we have on the case up to yet. This case is still open, it's still ongoing, only sort of last year, or the year before they did an age progression updated age progression you know if Aisha's still alive but let's get into some of the theories what people believe happened to her one theory is that she was possibly groomed by an adult predator and that that girl in the photograph was used to lure her out of her home that day maybe she thought that she was going meeting another little girl and it actually wasn't it was a predator her parents and other people also believe that she was influenced by this book that she was reading at the time she was reading it in school, it's called The Whipping Boy and it's about this boy, this prince who goes out on this exciting adventure into the night and that maybe Aisha wanted to go on an adventure of her own, that this book highly influenced her and she decided to go. Her mother also mentions the basketball game that was playing heavy on her mind before she went missing and possibly that had something to do with her leaving, like she felt so bad and miserable about it that she just needed to leave. Maybe that she was struggling to deal with the loss of that game and just ran away. As it stands, the FBI is offering a $25,000 reward for any information leading to her whereabouts. The Cleveland County Sheriff's Office is also offering a $20,000 reward for the same thing, so that's a $45,000 reward in total. And Asia Degree's parents just hope that whoever has done this, if somebody has taken their little girl, that they haven't done irreparable damage, that they can come forward and reveal, you know, what happened to her, where she is, if she's still alive and that somebody has the courage to come forward. They also had a billboard erected pretty much when Aisha went missing, like in the area that she was last seen, you know, in them woods, around them woods, and that still stands today in the hopes that it will spark memory. People will see it and think, oh, I, you know, maybe they never saw it before and they actually saw something that night that could have been vital and they just didn't know it. That is sometimes, that is why we do these cases. Apparently this case has been covered quite a lot but we cover them again and again because we want to get word out. We want to let these cases spread far and wide because somebody might see it and actually realize that they did see something that night and then come forward and it could be vital. Aisha would actually be around 30 years old today. Her mother actually stated in 2020 that we're hoping and praying that she had a halfway decent life, even though we didn't raise her. She was nine years old and she'll be 30 this year. So they're just praying that she is alive out there somewhere and that she had a good life, even though they weren't there for it. This case has shocked and confused so many people across the world, including myself, and nobody can really figure out why a happy, you know, well-mannered little girl that always followed the rules would just up and leave in the middle of the night. The thought is a scary one. Nobody has any idea why, the reasoning behind it. Whether she was going on some grand adventure or whether somebody lured her out of the safety of her own home. Who knows? We may never know. I really hope that we do. If anybody knows anything in this case, please do come forward. It is so vital. And I truly hope we find out one day what happened to her. But for now, her parents are in stuck in limbo wondering if she's even still out there, if she's still alive what happened to the little girl, why she left that night. It's just so sad. So please, if anyone knows anything, bring the family peace. You can even do it anonymously and nobody will know that it was you. But as of now, case remains unsolved. If you guys have enjoyed this video, give me a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for similar content. Anyway guys, that's all I have today on the case of Asia Degree. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bye.